AWS stands for Amazon Web Services. And uh, what we've been doing for the past 18 years is we've been providing infrastructure services to companies of all shapes and sizes. So whether you're a startup or a large government organization or a large enterprise, if you had an idea 20 years ago for some software that you wanted to build or a website or some analysis that you wanted to do, you had to go ahead, get a huge amount of money, build a data center, and then you had to rack and stack hardware inside that data center or before you could even try out your idea. So you had to be really committed to that idea because it took a lot of capital and it took a long time before you can even get started. So what we did at Amazon was we turned that on its head and we started to deliver the, anal uh, the, the, we started to deliver the analysis, the compute, the storage, the databases that you need to build an application on the web and we made it available as if it was a utility. Uh, so in the same way as when you want to just turn on your hairdryer, you plug it into the socket in the wall and you turn it on and you pay for the electricity only as and when you use it and you only pay for it on demand, we did exactly the same thing with all the infrastructure that you need to build applications. So you can start paying for your servers and your storage only when you need them and you only pay for what you use. And this ability to be able to take compute and storage and databases uh, as a utility is something that today we call cloud computing. It's the opportunity to be able to take an idea and very, very quickly see if that idea is, has got legs. And if it's got legs, do you want to keep investing in it, keep building it, and then make it available to people? And if it's successful and it starts to scale, we've got all the resources that you need in order to be able to do that on a very global scale. So uh, our approach is that we really make available everything that you need to be successful with artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence under the hood is, is just machine learning. It's nothing scary, it's just a lot of math that allows you to be able to take situations that you haven't seen yet and then predict an outcome. That's all it does. And so what we do is we provide all of the chips that you need to be able to either train machine learning models and train artificial intelligence models. Uh, we provide all of the silicon and the infrastructure to be able to run those models with very, very low cost and extremely low power. Uh, we also make available services that you can use to build uh, applications that use generative AI. We have a service that we have called Bedrock. And at the top of the stack, we have a service called Q, which is designed to be an assistant for all of the tasks inside an organization. So it can help you write code, it can help you analyze your data, it can help you get questions answered about your organization, all of those sorts of things using generative AI. So whether you want to get down into the weeds on the machine learning, or just build with these remarkable new models, or just use them inside your organization, AWS has a, a, a variety of options to help you out. So one of, the, one of the reasons that I think so many people are excited about generative AI is that there's two really big changes happening at the same time. The first big change is that the type of problems that we can solve using artificial intelligence are, are much more complicated than they've ever been before. So the usefulness of artificial intelligence is much higher than it's ever been before. That on its own would be pretty remarkable, but that at the same time, there is a broadening of accessibility to use these sorts of tools and techniques. You don't need deep machine learning expertise. You don't need deep data science expertise. These tools are easier than ever to use. So they are more sophisticated and powerful than ever, and they are easier to use than ever. And so as a result, the skills required to be successful with them are much, much lower. And as a result of that, they're available in much more of an equitable way globally. And so you don't need to have a PhD in machine learning to be successful with generative AI. You just need to understand and to be able to say what it is that you want to achieve. And the AI itself will interpret that and start to work with you to be able to create images or write your next great novel or create a new application, whatever it might be. Generative AI is very famous for being able to write poems or rap lyrics or haikus and those sorts of things. And that's fun and useful in a certain extent. Uh, but what it really is, uh, is a net new software component that we've never had available to us before, which allows us to start to apply reasoning and integration to the applications that we are building. And this has never been possible before. And so honestly, it's still very early. We're still figuring out when and where it can be used. Uh, but it allows you to start to be able to understand very, very large amounts of information. I've spoken to some companies and they have you know, hundreds of millions of documents inside their organization, like old life insurance documents. These things are you know, 90 years old, which means they're probably gonna pay out in the next decade or so. And at some point in those 90 years, they've been scanned, but nobody's ever read them. 
and those organizations have no idea what level of risk is associated to those life insurance documents. And so they're using a, a generative AI to be able to read those documents, connect the dots, and understand the risk in a way that wouldn't have been possible before. I think um, a lot of customers, a lot of users, a lot of organizations, when they start to experiment with generative AI, they have this idea in their head that in order to be successful with generative AI, they have to give up some level of confidentiality or privacy of their data. And I can honestly understand where that comes from. Uh, but at AWS, we just take a, a completely different approach. And so our services are designed to be secure from day one. So we don't use any of the data that flows through our paid artificial intelligence systems to improve the underlying models. That data remains under our customers' control, and uh, they get full visibility into how it's used. We don't have human reviewers or anything like that. And so as a result, when you're working with AWS, you're able to build applications where you can use sensitive information. You can use confidential information inside your organization without any fear that it'll be exfiltrated or used to improve the underlying models. So our approach is maybe a little different from how some other folks are approaching it. But as a result, customers are able to build much more useful applications. This is something that we've been uh, working on at, at Amazon for over a decade. Uh, we've got a very significant investment and commitment to sustainable energy. Uh, and in fact, just this year, we announced that 100% uh, of our operational energy is matched with renewable energy. So that's all of our fulfillment operations, all of our data centers is now matched with renewable energy. And that comes from the investments that we've been making in wind uh, and solar uh, over the past uh, couple of decades. Uh, we have over 500 wind and solar farms that are generating huge amounts of electricity to power these, uh, these, uh, these operations inside Amazon. Uh, and um, it's not just power, it's also water. And so we're well on a path now to be water positive, which means we put more water back into a community than we take out of it uh, by 2030. And the data centers that we're building here in Mexico, we have a, a new region that's coming online uh, next year uh, that is uh, designed to be air-cooled, so we won't be using water to cool any of the servers there. It's a remarkable culture of innovation. Uh, here in Mexico and the rest of Latin America, there is as much opportunity, if not more, than the rest of the world to drive the sort of business growth and digital transformation that we've seen that the cloud can enable in startup markets, in governments, in the enterprise sector, uh, in uh, industries like healthcare and life sciences and financial services and manufacturing. Uh, all of those are just as prevalent here as they are anywhere else in the world. And it's why we've been building out the infrastructure here with, at AWS with our data centers uh, over in the rest of Latin America and the new data center that we'll bring online uh, next year uh, in Mexico. The ability to be able to take an idea and quickly uh, uh, and safely experiment and develop that idea uh, to be able to start building that idea out, taking it into something that you use personally or turning it into a business that you make available to others that they can pay for, driving economic growth. Uh, there are new opportunities through artificial intelligence that, that just didn't exist uh, you know, even five years ago. And so it, we are really entering a new golden age, which is going to reward the ability to be able to communicate with each other and potentially AI systems. And it's going to materially reward curiosity and thought. And in an era where the ability to be able to uh, uh, develop your ideas so much more quickly, the ability to be able to be curious and satisfy that curiosity quickly is going to uh, enter us into a new golden era. So it's an incredibly exciting time for everyone. I can really see that um, we, are, we are entering an era where artificial intelligence, working with people, harnessing the creativity and the curiosity of everybody, is able to materially accelerate some of our hardest problems, materially accelerate the progress that we can make against climate change, materially accelerate the progress that we're able to make against new approaches to cancer treatments, and materially accelerate the approach that we have towards creating uh, economic growth. And so artificial intelligence may or may not be the thing that drives all of that, but it will absolutely be a tool used by all of these uh, remarkable people globally uh, that's going to accelerate these and other areas. And some of our uh, most challenging areas, I believe, will be solved uh, completely or in part using artificial intelligence.